Hello everybody, so I just wanted to show you the output of my crypto heads. I made them with Python using some generative art code and I've created an account on OpenSea which is where you can sell your NFTs, your non-fungible tokens. So um, you will need something called a MetaMask which uh, is a plugin for Firefox and or Chrome. And as you can see these were the images which I created dynamically using my Python code and some Photoshop PNG images. So um, yeah, I hope you like these and I've priced them quite high, partly to test the water. And if you've not already seen other NFTs such as crypt crypto, so mine are called crypto heads, whereas the famous ones, well, the, uh, the kind of the, the original ones were called uh, sorry, crypto, crypto, crypto punks. So mine was selling for, um, wow, yeah, mine was selling for 0.2 ETH, which is about eight hundred dollars. Um, these are selling for one hundred and thirty-eight. ETH, which is about 138 times $3,000. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? So um, if you've got any creative urges, then have a go. What's to There's nothing to lose. To list them, I just um, did create and then I didn't mint them. There's a thing called a gas fee for minting. So gas is basically um, what the charge is for using the blockchain to store the details of each of your NFTs. Um, don't incur that, just use Polygon. And there's a thing called Poly Polygon allows you to only mint the images when they're sold. So that's a much cheaper way of doing it. Um, and again, this is not strictly Python, but I made all the images with Python. So if you're interested in generative art or creating NFTs with Python, then hopefully this will be of interest to you. And let's just look at something else. Let's just go and um, I just want to show you something which is called uh, Solidity. If you've not already looked at Solidity, it's very similar to Python and JavaScript and C. And if you want to learn to code blockchain digital apps by building simple games, Crypto Zombies is an interactive school that teaches you all things technical about blockchains. Learn to make smart contracts in Solidity, Solidity or Libra by making your own crypto collectibles game. Now, I'm not actually going to go off and do this full time, but I just wanted to learn enough about it just so that it's... Uh, I don't know, might give me some options in the future. So get started, it's free. And um, yeah, Solidity Path, beginner to intermediate smart contracts. So um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to kind of pretend to know all about smart contracts and Solidity. All I really wanted to do here was just bring your attention to this really good course. And it's free, CryptoZombies.io, start course. Um, it's basically a, a coding tutorial, but it's presented in a quite a nice user-friendly and um, visually pleasing way, which is not always the case for coding. So, and also, if you we if we uh, just have a quick look at chapter one lesson overview. In lesson one, you're going to build a zombie factory to build an army of zombies. So, for zombies, read crypto punks or crypto heads. Our factory will maintain a database of all zombies in our army. So if you saw my previous video, I was actually creating a log file where I was linking the uh, the CID of the image to the name of the crypto head or name of the, the PNG. Our factory will have a function for creating new zombies. Each zombie will have a random and unique appearance. And that's always the kind of the, the selling point of an NFT. It's non-fungible, so it's just it is unique, and you are the owner of it. Nobody else is. 
and that's all made possible by the blockchain. So in later lessons, we'll have more functionality like giving the zombies the ability to attack humans. So this is a game, but really the first part of it is actually just coding a 16 digit integer. And each of, each of these parts uh, represents some of these, as you see, I dragged the slider and Pretty much this slider is actually doing what my Python code was doing with my crypto heads. So as you modify, oh, that's good. That's actually modifying it uh, between 0 and 360. That's pretty cool. And yeah, the eye color. So by generating some random numbers, you end up with a serial number. They're calling it the DNA here. And then with that serial number, it allows you to uniquely um, log the, the ID of the zombie. And then you can also check that you haven't already got one. Um, so let's just go to next here. And this is the code. So if you've not seen Solidity before, it's kind of like cross between Python and JavaScript, I believe. And um, yeah, that's basically just telling the version and then you create the contract here in the main window um, so here you would put uh, yeah contract so if this was python it would you'd be actually well <laughs> i don't know if it's compared to python or c but if it was c you'd be um creating your main function here Uh, yeah, and you need to put the, uh, the Solidity version, otherwise the uh, compiler complains. So this is compiled code. Um, create an empty contract called Zombie Factory. Uh, yeah, so then we put that here. And then we check our answer. <laughs> and then you go on to the next chapter. And then... So it starts off just looking at how to create a structure with the, the contract. So it's always contract and it's always pragma solidity. And then your main code goes in here. And um, this will be state variables and integers. Great job. Now that we've got a shell for our contract, let's learn about how solidity deals with variables. State variables are permanently stored in contract storage. This means they're written to the Ethereum blockchain. So they are, think of them like writing to a database. So an unsigned integer, my unsigned, unsigned integer. So if, you, if you're only coming from a Python background, um, unsigned integers must be non-negative. So it's got to be naught or plup or positive. In Solidity, uint is actually an alias for uint256, a 256-bit unsigned integer. You can declare units, oh, sorry, I was caught, <laughs> uints with less bits, 8, 16, 32, but in general you want to simply use uint except in specific cases, which we'll talk about in later lessons. Put it to the test. So let's just, uh, I'm not going to just go through this entire tutorial because it obviously you can all do, everyone can just do that themselves. So um, let's just check the answer. I declare a uint named DNA digits. So the variable name is DNA digits and we want to set it to 16 digits. We just uh, verify this is okay, yeah. And then I'll just quickly show you Solidity, which you can remix.ethereum.org. Oh, maybe it's the other way around. Ethereum Remix. It's called Remix, and remix.ethereum.org and Solidity loads in the browser 
Uh, and yeah, the first time you read it, you might get that. So you've got um, some demo contracts, and again, you, as, you, as you saw with our example, um, I'll just make that bigger for you. There we can see pregnant solidity. So that's basically the version of solidity that you want it to compile with. Contract storage, UN256, so they've explicitly called it, but you, you wouldn't need that. That would do the same. Public, um, there's a lot of stuff to learn about public and private, much like there would be if you've done C++. Um, if you want to, and then when you come to compile it, you just come down here, compile, and it's compiling. So what it's doing is compiling the bytes code, and then ultimately you can publish on IPFS. And if you saw my previous video or the one before last, you will have some knowledge of IPFS. And um, yeah, there you go. So that's just a quick look at Solidity. I'm not going to go on about it for ages because uh, this is really the place to come if you want to actually learn the code and how to use how to write the code. Um, the uses for it, uh, yeah, I'm, I don't I don't know all the full of. Uh, what's that going there? Don't know. That works anyway. Um, so yeah, Solidity Remix. Crypto zombies and open sea. So just a little roundup of what's uh, what's been going on in the Doctor Pi world. And um, yeah, I'd like to thank. Hope you find this interesting, or you may want to go off and learn this code yourself. Um, I'm sure you. I'm sure even if you don't want to do it uh, in anger, so to speak, then there's plenty to learn. in, as I say, math operations. The more different programming languages you learn, the more kind of pathways it's going to create inside your brain and then the more kind of comparisons and analogies analogs you can create in your head which will going forward make it easier to spot patterns and pick up new languages i believe so yeah thanks for watching and um yeah i'll see you soon thanks for watching don't forget thumbs up subscribe and all that yeah bye